Good day. Welcome to another edition of Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Eric Orris, your host, along with Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Francis Wills, and Fran, belated New Year's yeah, greetings to you, you and our listeners out there in uh, Putnam Valley. Yes, I wish everyone a happy and joyous year. And a healthy New Year. And a healthy New Year. Exciting things happening, as we say, each time in the Putnam Valley Schools. We're going to be talking to some high school students, middle school students, dealing with a unique program in tutoring. We're going to be talking to Pat Bellino, many other people. It's a jam-packed show this time. But before we do, it's winter time, And, of course, when winter has arrived, Fran Wills gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning on those nasty mornings. You must love yes. that. <laughs> it's, to converse it's with your colleagues. Yes. Our, all the superintendents in the area talk uh, about what they've heard from their transportation supervisors and uh, try to make a decision. It's very early in our district. Um, that's why, as you'll hear later on, uh, moving to the latest start of the high school will have a little benefit in that we will have a little more time to make a decision uh, with, a, with more knowledge about what to do with regard to delays or closings. And so we're very early. We have to make that decision by 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And um, it's hard even to make a decision in the dark. Literally and yes, figuratively. Yeah. In the but dark. safety is the watchword. Safety is the watchword, and um, we usually, as a region, make decisions. Occasionally, the roads in Putnam Valley, which are very um, often not as accessible, mm -hmm. uh, give us a little bit more of a problem than some other towns. But I have to compliment our highway uh, director, uh, Mr. Cobb, who you know does a wonderful hey, job, great job trying to yeah, accommodate great, the schools. Great job. You know, you talk about Pat Bellino. Uh, Pat is on the program as well today. Um, kind of a melancholy situation because our dear friend Pat, we've known Pat for many years, yes. is going to be retiring at the yes. end of the school at year. At the end of the school year. And um, again, it's a, one of those moments where you know how much someone it will be missed during these particularly difficult times. You'll hear about how uh, Pat's work and his work with the custodians meant that we had schools that were operational. They, they did have heat. We didn't have problems that could have occurred. And when the problems do occur, for example, at the middle school with the gym, we find ways uh, to address those as best we can. And uh, we didn't have the pipe situations that there was a lot of forethought in heating the schools ahead of time, keeping them warmer than normal, uh, the kinds of things that can, can help us. Okay. And uh, the pad is, is, is going to be missed for sure. Um, in terms of what he brings, uh, not just in the technical area, but in the commitment and the dedication and ownership that he has. Well, Pat will be with us again, I promise you that. But before we do that, though, let's say hi to Pat Bellino right here on Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Well, Fran, the gentleman who needs no introduction, Pat Bellino is with us, the Director of Facilities, and you name it, his business card is about that big. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. It has been a rough <laughs> few weeks of winter. Uh, yes, it has. And Putnam Valley schools have come through unscathed. Uh, I wouldn't say unscathed, but I would say very good shape. You know, I don't want, I don't want to jinx anything yet. Yeah. It was just starting the winter. But, but it was tough, though. It really, it really was, I, I think it's the coldest snap that, that I can remember in a long, long while uh, that the schools have had to go through. Uh, yeah. but, but again, between the, the custodial staff, the transportation staff, uh, they, they, they've maintained these buildings so, so well over the years now that uh, we, we were able to get through this. The one, one issue that we did have was the uh, middle school gym. Uh, we lost a couple of the years. We had a split pipe on one of the units that's, that, that services the gym, and we have another one that was waiting to be serviced, but with the snow and the ice, we couldn't get to it. Yeah. So the, the gym itself got uh, colder than we would like it to be, which really impacted not so much our educational concept, but it was the, our town uses it for parks and rec, so we did have the one little snafu over the last weekend, but I've already had the gentleman here already, uh, actually today, working on it to get them back up to speed. So when you heard some of these horror stories, you know, of commercial buildings and other schools closing, having to close because of no heat, cried pipes, uh, not not too bad in Putnam Valley. No, again, you know, knocking wood. Uh, we, we we came through this uh, relatively in, in very good shape. The the gentleman I have that run the buildings. Uh, uh, they, they, you know, they jumped out in front of it. They, they preheated the buildings as much as they could. 
in order to you know in anticipation of the drops because you, know, you always lose overnight. Sure. Uh, but we we've, we've kept it you know we we checked every every joint that we could check on the piping. We made sure all the drains were cleared ahead of time. Uh, things like you know the, just the you know the pre work that you that you normally have to do in order to keep a building up and running through these tough times. And the grounds are kept in excellent shape, you know, with the plowing and the sanding and the salting. Uh, thank you. Yeah, they, they again, it's the same crew. The uh, They do a phenomenal job with it. The uh, as, as I told the rest of the administrative team the other day, you know, while we were all, you know, snuggled in our beds or, you know, nice and warm in our houses, they were out here till 2 o'clock in the morning mm. uh, the other day with, with the, you know, removing the snow, getting it prepared for the next day. Uh, and it was, I remember looking at the, you know, at the temperature, the, ga the gauges and that, it was 10 degrees and it was actually like a minus 6 with, you know, wind with chill, the wind chill that they chill, were working yeah, in. They were yeah. here till 2 o'clock in the morning, then to come back again as of like 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. So they worked on a little sleep, they, you know, they, got, they got ready, and, uh, but really they do everything they can uh, over and above, you know, what, uh, what the expectations are. They, they really try to, to overachieve and they... they they usually do that for me, uh, and, and I'm so grateful for them. So. Well, that's really good. How, what kind of a staff do we have, numbers? Uh, we really, it's not a big staff. It's, uh, you know, between two groundskeepers to, to take care of roughly 90 uh, acres of property. Hmm. Uh, between the two build, the three buildings, we're, we're looking at about 16, 17 members. It's split between day and night. You know, we have the night, night coverage is mostly for the cleaning. And the custodial work gets done during the day. Yeah, so it's two separate campuses also. Yeah, two separate campuses, plus, again, the transportation sure. building. Uh, and, and, again, I don't want to leave out my transportation people. The, uh, my head bus driver you know, and my mechanic, I have one, you know, one and one, uh, made sure that each, each of the buses were up, running, warm, ready to go. Made sure their lot was plowed, so, you know, it was a safe condition. As you know, the elementary school has that, the exit, you know, uh, Right on our school it's right, yeah, right. It yeah. comes right out onto the onto the roadway there. Sure. We have to make sure that's plant, you know, plowed and sanded. And, and again, I want to give a shout out to uh, Larry Cobb, our highway superintendent, because they they assist us greatly with that. They make a pass through for us every time there's a snow. They sand for us when you know as we need it, and they have never never let us down. So, okay, okay. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Yep. And hope so the weatherman will give us a little break for a change. It'd be, it'd be nice. It'd be, uh, well, we're looking at 50 degrees today, and uh, <laughs> supposedly 60 tomorrow. I, I, might be, I might be coming to work in shorts. So, so we'll but then it's back to the deep freeze. Uh, you got it. All <laughs> right, well, be well. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, here we are, the end of January, beginning of February, hard to believe, and that means it's budget time. The budget vote, of course, takes place in May each year around New York State. And you and the administration of the Board of Education have already begun working on the 1819 budget. Yes, and of course we're doing very preliminary work because we don't have all the information. We don't have state aid numbers. Uh, we don't have the tax cap numbers. Uh, but or the you know the CPI, for example, another number that's very important to us. But what we do know is that we have to be extremely uh, cautious this year, as always. But we are looking at you know the salt situation, mm -hmm. the state and local tax uh, deduction that's gone, and how that impacts uh, our taxpayers. And we know, of course, that we will not uh, go above the tax cap, that we're very, very conscious of remaining within the tax cap. And we're looking at a sustainable budget. That's it. This year, we're looking closely, in other words, at um, retaining the resources we have. We're not adding uh, in any substantive way uh, that's what we want to do. Of course, we have contractual and fixed costs, sure. but we're not looking to add in a substantive way. We're, we're looking to uh, sort of uh, bring our horses together, if you will, in the barn and uh, manage as best we can uh, with the resources we have. And, of course, more coming up in our next programs on the website and the, the newspapers about the Putnam Valley School budget and the budget brochures yes. will be delivered later on in the spring as well. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Middle school activities, many wonderful things are happening. Let's check it out. We spoke to my friend, the effervescent young lady, who's the new middle school assistant principal. Let's say hi. The bubbling and effervescent Nicole Mangieri is with us again today, the assistant principal at the middle school, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How have the first couple of months been for the uh, 
2017-18 school year? It has been awesome. I think if anyone has been to visit the middle school, you'll see a lot of changes and hopefully um, what people per would perceive as positive changes, um, both in the look of the school, we've done some renovations, as well as the culture and feel of the school. I don't know if we spoke about it this summer, um, but one of the big initiatives uh, has been building relationships, and I think I did bring that up and we are reading Wonder, the entire school mm. um, is reading the book at the same time and reflecting on it and it's really been um, just something to create a unified uh, culture within the school every morning and students and teachers start their day that way um, and I think that's seeping into the work that we do day to day. I know one of the activities you're very involved in is the sustainability curriculum. What's the update? So the sustainability curriculum, I actually brought our vision. Right. Uh, so to talk a little bit about our work, we met this summer with the SELF, which is the Center for Environmental Literacy Foundation. And we, about myself and six to seven other teachers in the district, did a week-long workshop where we learned about sustainability. I admit going in, I was like, I want to be a part of this because I'm an ELA teacher and I really want to engage with science. But that's part of it. When you, you start with sustainability, you think science, it's so much more and that's really what our team took away. Um, and this was the vision that we created, so hopefully people out there can see it. Um, but this is a vision not just for the middle school, but really for our community. Um, and some highlights are that we want our students to be productive citizens within our community and our world, um, for them to develop an understanding and appreciation of Putnam Valley and the natural resources, but also um, the natural resources within our world. And um, another thing is that we really want them to be at the forefront of dialogue and action, which is where you see this not only living in our science curriculum, um, but throughout our school. So I think to present um, one of the, some of the highlights, we've been meeting as a committee uh, once per month, sometimes by ourselves, sometimes with uh, the Center for Environmental Literacy Foundation. We talk a little bit about um, projects that we want to do within the community, how to get our vision of sustain PV out to the community. When we're meeting with SELF, we're doing some curriculum development. Um, so there, just, there are many highlights, but speaking a little bit about the middle school, uh, Leanne Johnson, our sixth grade uh, science teacher, is doing experiments regularly with students. She's integrated the sustainable goals into her curriculum, and so you're seeing it live every day, and collaborating with her ELA teachers and social studies teachers to educate students about sustainability. Uh, then you look at our seventh grade. They read A Long Walk to Water, and they're actually going to be doing, a, I forget the exact name of it, but kind of a water awareness day mm -hmm. to really learn about how some communities don't have access to water, what that means for us, um, what it means for other communities as well. And kind of tying all that knowledge to Putnam Valley, we are hoping, we just learned that there is a um, natural Resources Council within the local community that we're hoping to partner with moving forward. Um, they're doing some citizen science and we want to bring that together. Uh, so we're very excited about curriculum. And I keep talking, but I think the other thing is um, the facilities changes. All of the schools are going to get LED light bulbs. Um, start Really that work has started and will continue. Um, and for anyone who's not aware, there's actually a facilities committee looking into more of the long-term vision for all of our facilities, K-12, um, and so we will be integrating some sustainable practices within that and looking at what do our classroom spaces look like, how does that encourage communication, collaboration, because we know that's part of sustainability, and it's also part of an excellent education. But this can be expanded to the whole district, and you say mm -hmm. the whole community, the whole county. Absolutely, and so what we're trying to do is, something that's upcoming is we're gonna do in the spring some sort of program. Mm -hmm. um, we've tossed around ideas about bringing a farmer's market onto campus, leveraging, um, we know that some of the families are doing their own stuff at home, where they're having their own gardens, or um, raising chickens, and that's just part of the food piece of it. Then we know that people are upside in different ways. So we're thinking about how do we want to bring that to the town, get people aware of what's going on, and then hopefully long term, um, some more initiatives with the community as in regards to like recycling, trash management, all of those pieces.
Did I tell you she's there for the visit, huh? Did I tell you, huh? The, another interesting pro program that's taking place at the Putnam Valley uh, Middle School mm -hmm. is this tutoring. Yes. High school students tutoring middle schoolers. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, and actually, this is live, so you can't see, but there are a bunch of high schoolers We're meet them anyway. right now. Um, so, what happens is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the high school students come over, and that's kind of my favorite part of the day. I didn't, I'm new to the district, so I don't know many of them, but to watch them come in and kind of see their old teachers um, and interact with our students is just such an awesome experience, and our students need positive role models in their lives. So, the tutoring, yes, they're working on homework, but they're also working working on building relationships, as we talked about, a big theme for us, um, with students who are older than them, um, and for our high schoolers, with students who are younger. younger. Yeah. Let's meet a couple of them, shall we? Sounds great. Jasmine and Meredith, as they say, come on down. Jasmine and Meredith, the two of the tutors. I'll let them sit. Sit down, ladies, hello. Mm -hmm. Meredith is a senior, and Jasmine is a sophomore. What do you get out of this program? What, what are you doing? What are you tutoring these younger kids? Um, I started with it three years ago when I was a sophomore, and I really just did it because I had always kind of wanted like a friend that was older than me. And then it was just a lot of fun, and I couldn't do it last year because of uh, conflict. But then my senior year, I was like, I might as well come back, make a lot of friends, make some relationship with the kids. It's like. They get very possessive, and it's kind of funny. It's like, no, 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 she's my tutor. And it's like, <laughs> it's kind of funny to have that. And it's very welcoming there, and I like doing it. And Jasmine is a sophomore. How was it working with these younger students? This is my first time doing this club, and I heard about it through some other people, and I thought I might try it to um, just, I, I wanted to get that interaction with the younger students, and um, I thought it would be helpful to them. And and how many, a good experience for me how many students are involved? A couple of dozen, would you say? Yeah, there's yeah, a bunch. Probably. Yeah. And a couple of days a week, work with the younger kids, mm -hmm. and I'm yes. sure the younger students enjoy it, as do the older ones. I hope they do. Well, I, I try and make it fun for them. <laughs> yes. You guys keep up the good work. Thank you. Well, three of the many middle school students who get that extra help twice a week, introduce yourselves. I'm Nicholas Keeler. Nick. I'm Charles Garcia. I'm Joshua Bustos. Why is it so cool having these older high school students come to your school and help you out like that? Well, it's cool because other, like, you can have the experience with other high school kids and they can help you if you're struggling with stuff. And also they could, like, be a, it's like, being a role model to us, and then when we're there, then we can be a role model to the other middle schoolers. Wonderful. What about you, sir? I think it's cool to have um, <coughs> extra help because people who don't like understand a subject in school, they can get help by high schoolers. Like if they're really struggling, then they can get help by high schoolers to complete whatever they're actually doing and to like move on with uh, the school year. I think it's cool being teached and helped with homework by the high schoolers because they get to, like they help you understand your work so you can like do it by yourself when you're when you're a little older and you get to so you get to do it and you get to like finish your homework. And maybe someday you will help middle schoolers when you get to high school. You can see the program is a success here in Putnam Valley. You and I have been talking about the extended, uh, the later day at the high school students bringing in a half hour later in the 18, 19 school 40, year. 40 minutes to be 40 exact. 40 minutes to a be exact. Period, it's period. happening. Yes. It will happen uh, in September 2018, coming up. And what we had promised that we would do is have the bus schedules early at this time of year so people could see what the bus schedules would look like, the new schedules which uh, with the additional buses needed because we have twice the number of students that we're carrying, um, we wanted um, the public to see the, uh, how the buses would run. And of course, the added benefit is that with the additional buses, it's shorter time on the bus. And when you have a longer time on a bus, that's when student behavior becomes an issue. Yeah. Uh, that's when you have disruption because kids get bored. Sure. And um, kids have to start so early in the morning at that high school and so at, with this 
new schedule, they'll actually get about an hour's an hour more to sleep, even though it's a 40 minute change because of the bus schedules adding to the benefit. And that's a, that's definitely instrumental. We know in health and well being the additional sleep. That's the research. One of Pat Bellino's many roles deals with transportation. Pat, why don't you come on back and just explain a little further as to how this new program is going to work. Well, for a number of months now, there's been talk about high school students coming in a little later in the 2018-19 school year. And now the die has been cast, as they say. It's going to happen. Yes, it is. You're involved uh, with that as well. Yeah, I just, uh, well, I'm, I'm involved in the point that uh, my transportation, you know, my transportation hat goes on and we try to make sure uh, we can accommodate what's needed for, for, that, for the upcoming pilot that the uh, school district and the Board of Education is asking us to do. Right. Uh, we, we're looking at running approximately the same times as the middle school. So it'd be running in, you'd be running in about uh, 1,200 kids will be coming in as opposed to 600 on a clip. We right now run a three-tier system we'd be dropping that down to a two-tier system. That's going to require additional buses and a, and a van, four additional buses and a van, which the board has authorized for us to move forward with. Uh, my, my transportation team, my head uh, bus driver, plus my, my uh, associate that's over there, the assistant that's, that works with him, we've worked together to put down actually new schedules. It'll be actually new routing for, it'll be, for what people are used to already. We'll, we'll change completely because, again, we're going from running 16 runs to 20 runs. Mm -hmm. And what we t the goal of it was to try to, to reduce the amount of times the children are on the buses. Uh, as you know, our district takes us all the way up as far as Roaring Brook. Right. Uh, a child can be on that bus. The, 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 average, the run on that bus, the bus run right now, is approximately 45 minutes. Uh, that's a long time to yeah. be sitting on a bus. Uh, what, we've, what we've looked at is we, we, we split that run up into two runs. In doing so, it looks like, and again, everything, this is all subject to change right now. Uh, we'll try this out, and we'll, we'll make the adjustments on the fly as needed. But it looks like we can have it down to roughly about 30 minutes, so cutting you know, 15 mm -hmm. minutes off of that time. Um, in each of the other runs, you know, we, looked at, we, we took a hard look at each of the runs at that point to see what, you know, where we could reduce you know, we, different pickup areas, that, things that would, that would help improve getting kids to school quicker, allowing them to get more sleep. Uh, the studies have shown that, the, you know, the later, you know, the more time a child has yes. to sleep is beneficial to the child. Uh, we, we're, we're all in on that in trying to get to get that accomplished. With some of these routes here we're running, uh, we, we, again, these are approximate times, but by coming in later, children will be able to, it'll be, some pickups will be almost an hour Later an than what they had. Yeah. Wow. So that's an additional hour of you know a, a possible sleep that they could get sure. to what they're getting now. So and it'd be easier also for the district on these nasty winter mornings. Right. Yeah. Well, as you know, as it is when we have these mornings, uh, I'm on, I'm in, I'm up with the, talking to Larry Cobb, my head bus driver, usually about three o'clock in the morning, uh, just to see where we are, what you know, what the conditions are. I then speak to Fran at about four fifteen every you know on those on those snowy days. Yeah just to make sure that we're doing the right things from a safety a safety standpoint and, and an educational standpoint. We try to make sure we get the kids in as much as we can. But, you know, again, safety is our, pri you know, our prime consideration. That's always a tough call. It, it really is. It's because not at 415 <laughs> and 615 would be, be totally a, different. Totally different, yeah. yeah. But, it's, you know, it's, it, it's a hard call to make. But, you, you know, you try to you, you make the, you make the decisions based on what's best for the student, you know, right. again, for health, you know. For their safety first, the safety, and then yes, that's most important. But again, we're you know, we're going to be sending out these schedules. Uh, they'll be going to the board probably this week for review, and it, we we anticipate sending out preliminary schedules so the parents can see what what the new runs would look like probably by the end of January. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, more about this as the uh, school year progresses. Yes, we'll be sure there'll be a lot more about it. So. Okay. Thank right. you so much, thank you, Pat sir. Bellino, We thank you. Thank you. Right Jeremy Luft is a busy guy these days involved with this facilities committee. Yes, um, he's been very active with the facilities committee, and um, we've had David Spittle, as, who is our board trustee, as the chair of the committee, and invited many, uh, invited the entire community to be part of it, and many of our community members joined, uh, as well as staff members, to talk about um, 
this opportunity we have uh, in the next few years to look at our facilities and say, are they really meeting the needs of our students in, instructionally as we look at the next generation schools? The kinds of things we're doing in schools now with small group work, projects through mm -hmm. STEM and engineering, different types of innovative uh, opportunities in maker spaces. The schools were not built for that purpose. So we need to look at how our schools actually reflect instructional quality at this time. And other school districts are doing similar things. So uh, we have the opportunity with some debt payments going off to uh, be able to um, actually work on a facilities plan, a long-range plan. Jeremy Luff stopped by. Let's say hi and welcome him back. Well, on our last show, we talked to Jeremy Luff, the Director of Learning and Innovation here in Putnam Valley, the new guy on the block, as we say. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good seeing you. How has the first few months of the school year been? It's been excellent. We're having a great time, uh, building relationships, teachers, administrators, getting to meet students. Um, it's really very exciting things going on here, so it's grateful to be part of it. What about this facilities planning committee? We understand you're very involved in that. Sure. Well, we have a, a unique opportunity uh, given our debt service coming off for the high school in upcoming years. So we started an exploratory committee, and we got participants from uh, community members, teachers, parents, uh, administrators to get together and to talk about what are our needs to support, what do we need to support our instructional program here in Putnam Valley. And we've had a bunch of meetings, and we've had great conversations about some of the things we would like to see to improve our schools here in Putnam Valley. Such as? Well, we know that we need some more science labs. We're looking for more innovative spaces to support STEM and science instruction, engineering, things of that sort. And really, we just need, especially our middle school. Our middle school has been pretty neglected over the years. Our cafeteria is really small. In fact, they cook the food here in the high school and bring it over to the middle school. Our classrooms at first period in that building, every single classroom is used. So we definitely need more instructional space at the middle school. And it could certainly use a bit of a facelift. The building is sort of in its original state from 1972 and has not really seen a lot of construction. So we're not talking about building new buildings. We're talking about refurbishing what we have. All right. Well, I mean, the place we're in now, we have to talk about all sorts of exciting things. Certainly over the next six months, we'll prioritize what's possible. There have been some discussions about building new spaces, but we have to decide balancing both what the impact would be for the budget as well as what our instructional needs are, but we're certainly exploring all options. And as the year goes on, we'll refine those and prioritize to what we think meets our instructional program as well as is most cost effective. Now, are these meetings open to the public? Yeah, sure. Um, like I said, there's community members and parents that are part of the committee. We have a great group of people with ex expertise in the construction area. Mm. So we have a lot of experts from the community who participate on the committee. But certainly it's open. We've recently, we shared a brief update with all of our faculty and staff, and we invited them to attend the meeting. So if anyone's interested from the community, they're certainly welcome to sit in and join the committee and offer any information they may have. Uh, the um, dates posted on the website? Sure. Well, the next meeting is scheduled for January 22nd, so I'm not sure if this will air before or after this. Right. Um, but yeah, they're always posted. Uh, information goes out, and they can always contact the school district if they have questions or want to know when the future meetings are scheduled. Okay, so give Jeremy a call and get involved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good seeing you again. You too. Pleasure well. See, see you next time. You got it. Jeremy Luft. Michael Lee's another intricate part of the Putnam Valley School District, a guy behind the scenes, but a guy who does a heck of a good job. Yes, um, he is our te te technological guru um, who really has a, a wonderful vision and a depth of understanding of technology as we move forward in its infrastructure, the networking, how we manage to have a one-to-one -one program with laptops here, um, how we can uh, get online quickly and efficiently because if we're going to use technology, we have to have the backup and the infrastructure to make that happen. So he's behind the scenes and he does a lot of work um, in that area. This is instrumental. He's also our CIO, which means that he is the district's information officer. And an information officer deals with all of the demands of the state education department for data. Mm. So he manages all of the data in the district. And that is, again, an enormous responsibility. It's a required position at the state level. But the understanding of how we take all of the data from all types of assessments, 
not just instructional assessments, but our staffing, uh, how all of our programs integrate. Uh, there's a requirement for reports on discipline, all kinds of reports. Those have to be put together in, in, in a program and sent to the state, then revised as, as the state requires. It's a significant, significant position. So and, he does all of that. And Michael's also involved with the Smart Schools Bond Act. Let's find out more about that right now. Well, in the early days of inside Putnam Valley Schools, this handsome gentleman, Mike Lee, was the guy behind the camera, making us all look good. Now he's on the other side of the camera, making him yeah, look good. Yeah. Mike, I'm understand you're involved with the Smart <clears throat> Bond Act. What is the Smart Bond Act? Well, the Smart Schools Bond Act was introduced in 2014 as sort of part of a $2 billion program from the state to help fund technology and education, including infrastructure upgrades. So that's sort of where our district is now. We were approved just this past summer, late summer, for um, about $517,000 to spend toward infrastructure upgrades as part of our overall allocation of $915,000. Upgrades in what areas? So right now we're focusing on doing the infrastructure upgrades. Because when you think about it, the single thing that you could upgrade that would positively affect everybody equally would be their network connection. Okay. You know, uh, the more reliably someone could connect, and the quicker people could connect, that just makes an overall better experience. Because in the past, uh, the system used to be the thing. You know, like how many servers do you have? And, and everything was all about local access, but now the network is becoming more of the system. So you upgrade the network, and then everybody benefits. And then the Putnam Valley Schools, now each student has the, his or her own computer. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we need a network you certainly do. that is going to be very yeah, reliable. Yeah. yeah, with all these hosted applications now, and you know, hosted, I mean like the cloud, uh, they're getting more and more uh, network and processor intensive. So by upgrading the network, it, it really benefits everybody in the school. And this is money once again coming in from New York State. Exactly, yeah. And they say in theory that these funds never expire. And so when we first uh, applied for these funds, uh, the price tag came out to, like I said, about uh, $517,000. Since we had first applied, we found this other hardware vendor, which we believe could accomplish the same thing for a lot less money. I mean, we're talking about maybe one-sixth of the price. Really? Yeah, so wow. I like to kind of think of this as um, like an EpiPen, right? You go to CVS, and if you need an EpiPen, you can either pay $600 for the EpiPen or maybe $100 for the generic version. So which one would you want to do? So we're, we're trying to think of, of ways to, to kind of stretch the dollars. You know, if we could get six upgrade cycles out of this it's because the funds don't expire, you know, we're, we're going to try to do that, you know, as there, long as it works. Are there additional funds out there available? Sure. Well, you know, we could we could spend up to our $915,000 uh, total allotment. So, you know, the more uh, responsible we are with, with these funds, we could make it, we could try to make it last for a very long time. Okay. Well, you will keep up the good work. Oh, thanks. And this is the guy behind the uh, technology here in the Putnam Valley Schools. Good seeing you again. Great seeing you. Be well. Thanks. Thank you. As much as we like to think the bad weather's over with, unfortunately, as we say, it's only the end of January, beginning of February, at least another six weeks to go. And that means could be more delays, more school cancellations. And when that happens, Fran, what's the message you want to get out there to our viewers? We want to make sure that you listen for the superintendent's call, that you look for the authentic Blackboard Connect that you will receive personally in your homes. Uh, in order to determine what the decision of the district is. You also have a notification app. Most uh, of our community members have that app. Uh, please look at that for the information, because I know that sometimes uh, there have been some scams or phony uh, information blasts that have gone out on, on uh, media, social media. And uh, I don't think Russia is intervening in our prog <laughs> program, but uh, I do know that there are uh, possibly some students in other districts uh, who uh, thought this would be a fun way in the, the last during the last storm to get information out from about six or seven districts right. in the area, and of course it wasn't so. We did end up uh, closing 
um, on that particular day due to the due to the weather. But please look for the authentic information that we send out. And as Francis said, it's on the website. You'll get the phone call. It's on area radio stations, New York television stations. Have a scroll along the bottom as well. So the information will be out there. And um, you know today's discussion inside Putnam Valley was um, particularly, I thought, uh, enlightening because we had staff here, but we also had our students. They're always enlightening. And, and yes, they're always <laughs> enlightening. But when you have students, you yes. really understand why we're here. And when you hear the voice of our students, it, uh, you, you understand the purpose, you understand how the students feel about school, how much uh, of a sense of belonging they have, uh, particularly this program where the high school students are working with our middle school students. Uh, those students look up to the high schoolers and the sense of relationship, the sense of connectedness uh, makes the district special. Education is a unique, unique profession. Nothing else like in the world. No. no. It's an opportunity. You know, you're molding babies yes. for their future lives. And it's, it's really okay. something those of us who are in education are very grateful for, the opportunity to be there. For that. Okay. We well, thank you. Thank you. Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Fran Wills, we thank you so much for your able assistance, Dan. I'm Eric Gross. Until next time, you've been watching Inside Putnam Valley Schools. Be well, be safe, have yourselves a good one. Bye-bye now.